everyone, it's Lisa here. In this quick tutorial, I just want to run over some tips for those of you who are using the Procreate version of the Pattern Design Toolkit. I'll be going over some steps that are super important for you to create a successful repeat that some of you might be missing in your process as you're working with the templates. I'm using one of the large templates and I'm using the grid repeat. So I opted for this particular template which is the tossed oval shape and I've already drawn my motifs. So I just want to go over some of the important steps that you do need to follow to ensure a successful repeat. Some of you might be missing the step of combining your motifs with the pattern tile. So the best and easiest way to do that is to keep your original in its layer form and make a duplicate of that. And then I'm just turning off my original. So this is my original that I'm not going to touch. And then I'm just going to flatten that. And then I want to change the background of my pattern tile, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. We need to group it with our motifs. So I'm just going to move it up. And I just want to change the background first. And now I want to create that group. So the reason why I'm creating the group with the pattern tile, it's the pattern tile that is going to determine where we move our motifs. So it's not the motifs that is going to guide us, it is this important pattern tile. So if I can just explain further, as you know with Procreate, you can't draw beyond the boundaries of the artboard, it gets chopped off. So essentially what I've done is I've created this fake artboard around our pattern tile. And you need to kind of think about only really focusing on the pattern tile that you eventually will be creating. See this area as an extra bit of artboard that falls outside um, your pattern tile. That's just for you to help um, see where your motifs are going to fall and how you can see how the pattern is starting to form as you, as you draw. But it's important to note that anything that falls outside of your pattern tile is repeated again on the other side. So for example, all these elements here need to be repeated here again. And anything that falls here needs to be repeated here. And I'm going to show you exactly the results as we're working, but it's important to have that in mind when you're creating your uh, motifs. And as I said, it's this pattern tile that is going to guide us um, when we're placing our motifs. It's not the motifs themselves. So some of you are having problems snapping that to the grid. Procreate is a little bit clumsy like that. I wish it had a transform panel. It doesn't. Um, so the best way to actually ensure that your repeat is successful without any of those key lines or thin little lines that you see is to be pixel accurate. So we're going to zoom in super close. You're going to zoom into its absolute maximum to ensure that you are in fact snapping it to the grid. And I'm going to show you a little trick if you're struggling to get that to fit, especially if you need to zoom in um, really large. So I'm going to go ahead. We've got our group now. So if you can recall, I made a duplicate of this pattern tile and I've changed the background of, I've changed that color, should I say, to my orange background and I've grouped it with my motifs, but I still have my original layer motifs. So this group is now going to be what I'm going to duplicate. Okay, I've reached my uh, limit. So what I want to do now is just delete some of these templates that I'm not using, just to free up some layers. Let's just start with that, and I'm going to duplicate again. I'm going to start with four duplicates, and I'm going to see if that's enough. And just turn off the ones I don't need, and start working. Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn off that one, and now this one we're going to, so it's this, this top one that I'm going to move to the left because this is a grid repeat. So we need to go left, right, top and bottom. And once I've done that, I'm going to check my work. So I need to be, as I said, pixel accurate in order to um, not have any of those white lines in our work. So coming over to the transform tool, I'm going to zoom in and just move that across. I do have my snapping on, but because Procreate is selecting all of this, it's obviously going to be difficult to snap that edge 
we're just snapping this tile. So I'm going to show you the best way to work around that. And we're going to zoom in super close, but now it's getting to a point where it's difficult for me to zoom in without enlarging my artwork as well. So we want to hold our finger down on this transform tool and then zoom in further. So you'll see that makes much, much easier. I'm going to move that into position and I'm aiming for that corner to meet that guide. And I need to zoom in again because I want to be absolutely certain that I'm at its max, which it looks like I am. And then I'm just simply going to place that on the edge of that guide and come out of that. Now that I'm finished with that pattern tile, I'm going to delete that to free up some layers and then move on to the next one. And another method you can use if you're struggling to see the edge of your pattern tile is just simply turn off your, mo your motif uh, layer. So we're still going to work with a group, but we've turned off that motif layer. So when I move this entire group, it's going to move everything, but it's essentially just leaving that pattern tile visible, which makes it much easier for you to see. There is another method you can use. It sometimes would be easier if you turned this to multiply or even if you turned your artwork to multiply and then when you finish, just remember to turn it back. But I'm, I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to leave it as normal because I've turned my motif uh, layer off, making sure I'm on my group. And I'm going to move that across. And now we're going to zoom in super close. If you can recall, we need to be pixel accurate. So I'm going to hold that down just so that I can zoom in to its max. I'm going to let go because I want to move this. And I'm going to hold that again to zoom in. And that looks like it's max zoom. And I'm going to find that edge. And I can see I'm slightly, slightly off. We really want to be pixel accurate and delete that and just turn that motif layer back on and now I want to work with moving this to the top but I can see I already need another group because we need to make sure that these are also repeated here so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that because now I have those extra layers that I can have more duplicates and just turn that off because we're going to now work on this group moving that up And I'm zooming into its absolute max. I'm letting go to move that. Oops. Holding that down and zooming in. And then we want to be absolutely accurate as much as we can. I don't need my pattern tile layer anymore. It's done its job. So I'm going to delete that. And then move this to the bottom and I'm going to zoom in, hold my transform tool down, move that into position and you'll notice I'm being absolutely accurate with my uh, placement making sure that everything does line up to the guides and delete this because we don't need it anymore and then turn that original um, group back on and now I'm going to check my work and this is an important step because you might assume that you have everything repeated but sometimes corners need to be um, uh, also repeated and just moving that to the side top and other side and bottom isn't enough to ensure that all of your motifs have been repeated so I'm going to check my work and there is no corner here, so that looks good. There's nothing coming over this edge, so that looks good. This side is repeating there. That side is repeating at the bottom. So far, it all looks pretty good. And then finally, I want to move my original motifs to the top. So I'm just simply going to move that entire layer right to the top. 
and I think we are ready to test it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of our entire document. And as you know, that's a good idea in case you have uh, made a mistake along the way, you can always go back to your original. And what I want to do is I want to flatten all of those. And I'm pretty happy with my background color. So I'm actually going to flatten it with that background color as well. And then I'm coming over to my crop and resize. And we know that our repeat tile needs to be cropped down to 4,000 pixels by 4,000. I'm going to turn snapping on and then just move that crop into my snap grid area and then hit done. And I'm going to duplicate that four times and I'm going to leave my original and just do my pattern test with those four duplicates. And we're going to do the same with this. We're going to ensure that this is in fact two, and I can already see it's not 2000 pixels. So again, you need to be absolutely pixel accurate and make sure that it has in fact snapped to that grid. And I can see it has snapped now. And we may as well start with the top one doing the same over here and making sure that this is 2000 by 2000. It's really important because that also affects your test. You could do everything correctly and then when you test it, you don't snap it to the grid and you think you've made a mistake when in actual fact it just hasn't been snapped. And bringing this down. So I'm just tapping on the corner and I'm making sure that dimension is 2000 and then zooming in, making sure that placement is correct. And I haven't kept track of my repeats. Okay, so it's this one we need to change and move that to the corner. Again, 2000 pixels, zooming in, moving that into position. And then what I want to do is turn off my guide and I'm going to check my work. And we have no lines anywhere, no elements that have been cut off. So our repeating tile works perfectly. So I just want to recap, make sure that we have gone over all the steps correctly. You want to be pixel accurate in Procreate when you're zooming in and snapping your uh, repeat tile to the grid lines. And you want to be using your pattern tile as your guide, not your motifs. So the pattern tile is what you're using to move your motifs around. And then if you're struggling to see anything, you can either turn off the layer in the group or you can set it to multiply. And if you're struggling to enlarge it while you are quite zoomed in already, you're just going to use your finger on that transform tool and then increase your, um, you know, your screen to zoom in closer. And then of course, Finally, you want to check your work. You just want to run your eye over the edges, make sure that everything that falls outside this side is in fact poking in on this side and top and bottom and corners as well. So if I had anything, um, for example, that was taking over the entire corner here, we would need to create yet another duplicate for those corners as well. So that's a good way to check your work if you are having elements that are being chopped off. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can resize the template if you need it larger. In the guide, you'll find two examples um, of sizes to increase it to. Uh, one is for 5,000 pixels uh, by 5,000 for your end tile, and the other one is 6,000 pixels. So I'm going to enlarge my pattern tile to 5,000 pixels. So if you can recall with the kit, the final repeat uh, tile is 4,000 by 4,000 for the large ones, but I want to increase that to be 5,000 pixels, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's super important that you do all your resizing before you start creating your motifs. You want to enlarge all the templates how you need them before you actually start making uh, any artwork on the canvas or in the document. So what I want to do now is I'm going to choose just turning on my pattern tile. For example, if I wanted to use the simple one direction as my template, and I was a bit concerned about uh, layers that I might run out of, then I'm going to delete the ones I'm not gonna use. 
and just keep the one that I'll be working on. So what I want to do now is enlarge that to 5,000. And in the guide, you'll find the measurements for that. So I know I need to enlarge this to 7,000 pixels, but I just want to lock that. And oops, what I should have done is I'm just going to reset that. What I should have done is it's very important that you have resample canvas on before you enter in your measurements. And then you're just going to hit done. And Procreate will increase the size of your document. And we can actually go ahead and double check that. And you'll see that um, the size is now 7 by 7, which is exactly what we want. But this is a very important, crucial step to take. What you need to do is recreate the pattern tile. So when Procreate enlarges the document, there will be some pixelation. And we need that pattern tile edges to be absolutely crisp. So if I zoom in, and I zoom in really tight, hopefully you can see that on screen, you'll see it's kind of blurry, it's created a little bit of pixelation, and we can't have that because it's this pattern tile that is guiding us when we move our motifs around, and that edge needs to be absolutely crisp. And you can even double check that by, if you tap on the corner, you'll see it's created a couple of more pixels that we don't want. So the best thing would be to just want to choose white oops is to delete this so we're going to clear that layer and I've got my white uh, selected and I'm just going to drag and drop and then I'm going to tap on this corner and I'm going to enter in my new size which is 5,000 by 5,000 I still have my snapping on and I'm going to move that into position and then I'm going to zoom in and make absolutely sure that it is in fact snapping to my grid. And if I zoom in, you'll see the edges are absolutely crisp now, which is exactly what we want. So now I can go ahead and start creating in this document, knowing that my artwork will be high res and crisp, and the pattern tile is ready to be used in the repeat. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that answered um, a lot of your questions that you might be having using the, the kit. But of course, please do reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to help if you have any other questions at all. Thanks so much for watching and happy creating.